Hello, Gary. Hey, Vic, how are you? All right. Let's hope that more people join. Yeah. Um, it's got the 1030 too, so I have to jump 1030. Yeah, yeah. I also got a regret from uh, many people about the meeting. So I'm not really sure how far we're going to take this one. Hello, Money. Hey, hey. Hey, Money. Hey, So I think I'm going to just share the antitrust policy. Um, and I'll use this time to just say that Apple meet meetings are uh, operate under the antitrust policy. And antitrust policy um, implies that we are not engaged in any anti-competitive behavior. And if you do not uh, wish to adhere to this policy, uh, please leave the meeting. So that's the first uh, statement. And also, since this seems to be a very thin uh, attendance, I get the feeling that uh, we might either end early or try to see, uh, you know, stimulate more attendance in the future. Uh, and in order to stimulate more attendance in the future, we will have, um, you know, presentation from Molly, Molly Gray, Principal Architect, Microsoft, Azure Blockchain, uh, Azure platform and other uh, initiatives, but he's also the chair of the working group in token taxonomy initiative, which is, which is a huge uh, enterprise with lots of different uh, members um, from both the technology side and others uh, and it's being put together by, by Ron, who is a uh, who is the chair of the EEA? Um, so I had contacted him for a presentation on token taxonomy because I think we are talking a lot about cash on ledger, um, and there have been several developments. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, Murali, who's supposed to be uh, on talking about this, is not going to be there today. Uh, anyway, so you can see the antitrust policy here. Uh, now, there's a, one more thing we have to talk about, which is the code of conduct. The card of conduct says be nice to others. That's basically it. Uh, so we have six participants, which is very uh, good. And let us uh, begin the meeting by, okay, for the, for the people who, who joined uh, late, uh, we just read the antitrust policy and the hyperledger code of conduct. Uh, and now we go to the introductions, and I think we should get everybody to introduce themselves, even the people who have attended before, so that people have a um, sense of who's on on the meeting and what they're uh, what they bring to the table in terms of their abilities and uh, their concerns. So. Uh, the first person I see on my list here is Gary. Uh, I know that he's introduced himself before, but I want him to do it so that the others on the call get a sense. Well, I'm, you're breaking up there. An intro? intro? Yes, please. Um, yeah, sure. 
So yeah, we're so, going to go down the list uh, okay. as I see it and call people off up and they can either introduce themselves if we, they don't want to, that is okay too. I'll introduce myself. So uh, yeah, I'm Gary Miller. I'm with Intain. We are a company that's built um, architecture for running the information rails and data for asset-backed securities transactions. So pools of car loans, mortgage loans, computer, uh, container leases, what have you. And um, we, we've built on, on Hyperledger Fiber. When you say asset-backed securities, uh, do you also include uh, mortgages or no? Yeah, so what, yeah, I want to be clear. That's why I brought up a, a few examples because a lot of people think asset-backed security or securitization means tokenizing, and we're not tokenizers. So this could be in, anytime where you have a pool of assets where the cash flows from those assets pay bondholders, different tranches of bondholders, different maturities, et cetera. So we, we build the rails in the middle. So right now, when I got in the business in securitization in 19, you know, early 90s, uh, we were using Excel spreadsheets and it still goes on on Excel spreadsheets. You send from the servicer to the trustee, et cetera, et cetera. And it's ripe with error, uh, time consuming, not transparent. So what we've done is using shared ledger, all parties in a transaction have the same source data. And then with smart contracts, we code the, the payment waterfall or investor report or trigger and default calculations, things like that. So it's just, uh, uh, it kind of automates it, makes it very transparent and, and creates a zero reconciliation situation among all the parties in a transaction. So yeah, it could be mortgages, auto loans, anytime you have, you know, granular pool of many little assets that are, the, the cash flows from those assets pay bondholders or lenders. Or whoever. Yeah, so the cash flows have to be backed by real collateral, which can, which needs to be valued frequently, I guess. In order to, um, it's not so much evaluation as much as if the person made their car payment, that payment needs to go into a trust and be divvied up among all these different tranches of securities with multiple investors in those tranches. But, by the way, Gary, um, you're coming in faint. I don't know whether it's just me or other people. Uh, maybe it's me, you know, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know what to do here, but uh, I'm on we, a headset. Yeah, we, we, can, we can hear uh, Gary well. Oh, okay. So that's me then. Whatever system I'm employing does not seem to be... Okay, go ahead. Uh, you were saying about the collateral. Yeah, I was saying it's not so much about valuing the collateral, in a mark to market sense, it's just accounting for the cash flows that come in. You might have 10,000, 20,000 loans in a securitization, and, and all those 20,000 loans, they all have different terms, maybe interest rates, and some made their payments, some paid a late charge, some their check bounced, and all of that gets all that gets summed up each month. And then that's deposited into a uh, you know, collection account to be divvied up among all the uh, bondholders. And it's very complicated math, uh, the models and the order of priority of payments. And that may change if delinquencies hit a certain number on the pool. And you know, it's just very complicated math and everyone's still using kind of Excel models or, or Intex and it's just yes. time consuming. And so we, uh, we just automate it all. So we've done proof of concepts. We're in a partnership with the trustee bank. Uh, well, we're negotiating now. We did a proof of concept for them and they loved it where uh, you know, they'll white label our, our system and onboard their clients and, and you know, start running all the reporting using our uh, blockchain. Yeah, I mean, um, actually I worked, I created a uh, mortgage-backed security uh, system. Uh, then we uh, later absorbed uh, parts of uh, our credit, uh, uh, you know, credit back securities uh, into the system. And I'm quite familiar with uh, Intex. I'm quite familiar with building out some kind of an infrastructure that unites all of this stuff. Uh, and I was just wondering uh, 
about one thing, which is you said that you're still on Excel spreadsheets, you're still, um, I mean, I know that there are Excel calls that you can make to Intex. There are uh, calls that you can make to other uh, systems and so on. But in the end, uh, you know, in terms of blockchain, are you doing anything uh, currently? I, I missed that part. Yes, so well, we have about three or four clients, uh, but in the what I call the flow ABS market, we are, entering into a partnership with a trustee bank. Um, but to your point right now, there's often a loan data agent who works with the servicer to prepare a servicer report. They have about a week to do that. That goes to the trustee, then they have to calculate you know, who gets what payments and run their models. And an investor is getting their investor report on the 20th of the month for the prior month. What we do automates all that. So you know, the first day of the month, the second day of the month, it's just, it's just available. You know, because um, everything, you know, by midnight of the end of the month, there's no new information. It's just three weeks spent compiling it and comparing and reconciling and calculating. Uh, and that servicer report on the proof of concept we did on a very sophisticated marketplace lender, uh, that servicer report was an Excel spreadsheet, you know, that someone put together off the servicer data. And then the trustee pulls that, pulls up their Excel model and and puts number books by hand into it and then gets results and then they prepare the investor report and pull that up and then type in the numbers and so you know our idea is to create an end-to-end -end da automated data solution and by being on blockchain you get the benefits the blockchain benefits transparency uh, immutability no one's no centralized control over the data everyone's kind of drinking from the same well yeah, um, so you're, you're just starting out on this uh, particular initiative or? Well, we've, we've been in business about a year and a half. We did a, a proof of concept in India. Most of the team is in India. Uh, we did it for a pool of motorcycle loans there to kind of build out, you know, the million lines of code that went into this. Uh, and, and then we started about six months ago in earnest, I guess, marketing here in the U.S. and attending the securitization trade shows, the conference in Vegas and Miami, and um, are starting to get our first deals. We're also using it for an oil well tokenization platform that someone's putting together. So where they're, they're actually tokenizing oil leases, uh, the limited partnership interest in these oil leases, and we're running the value, the data underneath it. So here's an oil well, here's the production data, here's the, the sales that came in, it's kind of like someone paying a car loan. It's just, it's a, it's a little financial asset sitting over here that has all this monthly data and reconciliation coming in. So it, the way we look at it is if you've got a bunch of assets on one side and then you have a bunch of investors on the other side, we do everything, we run all the information in between those two. We take all the asset data. So, so in the case of the oil well tokenizer, uh, you know, that token is just a token. Well, they'll be able to click in to see the underlying data supporting that asset, what the cash flows were, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's we're, think of it as if you want to buy Pepsi stock, you log into Charles Schwab, but you, you want to look at financials, you click through the site and you end up maybe in the Edgar database getting data. So we're kind of like that, the underlying information to support value in an automated and transparent fashion. It, it slots in beautifully with our mission in the capital markets uh, special interest group. So that that's good. Uh, the second thing I want to say is if you ever feel like presenting one of those uh, initiatives, especially the more, uh, let's say, mature one, which yeah. is, would be the motorcycle lending project, and obviously anything that uh, is public uh, on this particular uh, channel that would be yeah. uh, useful to our members and our community. And the second thing is, uh, I you know I think you should address some of the uh, elephants in the room. One of them is the is the issue of oracles. Uh, you know because all of this is uh, subject to data that is coming. Uh, from outside the blockchain, 
or maybe it is not. I don't know how your uh, system works. Yeah. So. Well, the the in the case of a trustee, they have a, a authoritative, regulated reason to be in a transaction, uh, and they're the one who they are liable, responsible by law for providing these and and for contract for providing the information. So this is an automation tool for them that they still pull the trigger on producing the report and they can put an input. So let's say there's an expense on a transaction that is extraneous, that's not modeled. You know, there, we have inputs for them to quote publish the report, but they could do that at, at you know, 9 a.m. the first day of the month instead of waiting till the 20th because all that information yeah, yeah. is available. So, uh, but I'd be happy to present. We, we uh, for the trustee, they spend about four to five hours per month per transaction on just the monthly report. And we, you know, it takes about four minutes to just upload the service report, publish the blockchain, and then the report's just there, export to PDF. They, I mean, it's just four hours to four minutes. So they're, they're, we showed it to a bunch of trustees and it's kind of jaw dropping. So uh, the, the response, yeah. so. Sounds fascinating. Uh, now, next is Money, who's obviously been on this call before also. Um, so please, uh, Gary, you know, we'll contact, we'll uh, connect later to set up a time. And I think you guys, all of you would be, uh, would benefit from attending next uh, call, which will feature Molly Gray, uh, the principal architect of Azure, and also the chair of the Token Tox Taxonomy Institute Initiative um, working group, technical working group. Uh, he's a highly technical guy. So maybe, you know, we'll need to moderate a little bit what he says here, but at the same time, we might uh, find some uh, fascinating information about tokenization from him and what's going on in the marketplace uh, other than just Hyperledger, but, you know, maybe we can take lessons from that Anyway, money, please. Uh, I'm a manipulator of Flopsub. Uh, we are uh, engaged in this uh, you know, blockchain, blockchain PLC um, on two fronts. One is on the old derivatives. We are working with the USDS EDM working group, uh, defining the USDS EDM model. Uh, and that part of the work is already, I mean, I'll publish some of the work uh, in, the, uh, in the notes in the, in the, in the project. Uh, separately, uh, we are working on a, full, uh, a life cycle of digital assets using again with SDM uh, and Corda. Um, so uh, you can uniformly be able to buy for the site, interact, and, and execute and settle more or less in a real time basis. Thank you, Bunny. Thank you, Bunny. Uh, next one is a phone number that I have here 212. Seven two three five six zero one. Hi, this is Milena from City. Milena from. Um, so I work at City on the blockchain team for markets and security services, and I'm responsible for understanding the blockchain technology and how we can apply it within our business. Um, and then I also maintain all the relationships with um, external parties like other banks and startups that are emerging to see how we can potentially use them within our business. Um, and then I also evaluate startups to see if we would make a strategic investment in them. So you're in the security services which implies custody and other other uh, post-trade processing like corporate actions and stuff like that or uh, I mean and and also you seem to be in the innovation department also the investment uh, decision department which means that you're uh, evaluating you, you said companies for uh, suitability for your own investments. That's yeah, a, that's, that's correct. That's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. 
and I, I would yeah. love to talk to her. <laughs> this is Gary <laughs> jumping in, so just sorry. Yeah, sorry. definitely. I don't want to hijack the, the your No, no, no. This is the we purpose of this meeting. To talk to you. <laughs> this is the purpose of this meeting. All right. Bring uh, uh, like-minded folks together on the subject of uh, blockchain and also on the subject of blockchain and capital markets in particular. And capital markets spans uh, such a wide uh, swath, including, um, including of course, uh, individual investments, but I mean, they are not, you know, they are private equity sort of deals, I guess, uh, unless uh, city is going to tokenize that and sell it into the marketplace, which would be a very interesting thing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Offer is the next person on my list. His name is Offer A. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing it correctly, whether it's. Yes, uh, how are you guys doing? All right. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm from the New York Security Token Exchange. Um, our primary focus is security tokens, uh, which I'm not sure that uh, probably everybody knows. Uh, <clears throat> if somebody doesn't know about it, I'd be happy to explain. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, um, <clears throat> basically what we're doing is we take the entire financial uh, market, financial markets, and uh, instead of paper stocks, we um, basically um, doing something called security token, which are, which is basically a token that uh, uh, behind each token has an asset, <clears throat> whether it's a stock, a bond, uh, commodities, uh, and so on. So uh, we are basically uh, what we believe is that uh, this entire market is going to change uh, to a digital form um, and basically um, <clears throat> end the age of uh, paper in terms of security. So you're specifically focused on the tokenization of existing securities. Um, we do both. Uh, we do two things. <clears throat> First, we um, uh, uh, basically we can handle any type of security. Um, and that's one. Uh, we have two focuses. One is the primary market for issuance of new uh, securities, whether it's a startup, whether it's uh, a fund, uh, or any, any asset-backed uh, securities. <clears throat> and the second thing is a primary market, uh, secondary market, uh, to trade all of those security tokens. Um, <clears throat> so basically, we cover the entire financial uh, uh, ecosystem. So let me ask you something. Um, how mature are you, and do you have a product, or do you have a POC, do you have a uh, MVP, something that is fit uh, to be uh, shown around, or is it uh, still in the... Uh, you know, ideation phase. Okay, uh, we, we have a working product. <clears throat> it's not launched yet. Uh, and we're expecting to launch it in uh, the next two quarters. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, Go ahead. The, the most important thing in, in this market, basically, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, something like two years ago, uh, if you remember the IC, uh, ICO craze that everybody were issuing um, coins and so on, um, <clears throat> we believe we believe basically we foreseen the market uh, the all of the ICO um, uh, shutdown uh, because it's uh, wasn't legal. So um, <clears throat> a few companies basically we started it like uh, two years ago, and we came, basically this is the time where the SEC. Uh, said uh, they evaluated what we're doing and said, okay, we want to do it because basically the IRS wanted the taxes from uh, the trading. 
So what happened is the, the SEC literally approved ICOs, which is now STOs, um, <clears throat> but the, the, the requirement is that it's gonna be regulated. Um, so, ba so basically today's, the, the situation is that it's uh, the SEC um, uh, is uh, approving it and we just, uh, you know, seeing the market evolve. I mean, everybody here in the financial market probably knows, um, like Gary mentioned, that it's a very tedious work, uh, very, uh, all the systems are legacy. Um, <clears throat> it's um, built part up, uh, upon part. And uh, if you might remember uh, what Grispan uh, said in the two uh, 2013 uh, collapse, the, there is a huge issue of settlement, uh, and basically nobody knows where the stock from. Or it, the, that that was the main problem of, of the collapse. So basically, our aim is to, to solve this and uh, <clears throat> make it um, um, transparent to, to all the users. That's uh, that's our focus. Yeah, yeah, beneficial ownership. Um is a big problem um, and I believe that a lot of people are working on this and there is of course the whole tension between uh, utility tokens, uh, security tokens being one of them and the... Um, no, a security token... I, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, utility tokens, security tokens, then you have the so-called store of value which seems like, you know, it, it's not it's not uh, linked to anything in the real world. So we have no, all, all no, this, is, this is this is a, a main mis misconception. It's the total opposite of utility token. Utility token. When when I founded the uh, we started the company, um, utility to token is is fictional. No no no. I mean I I I misspoke. I didn't mean utility tokens. What I was talking about was the security token versus you know, store of value that is like a Bitcoin, which is not linked to any collateral, right? You are- Exactly, uh, exactly. So what we're doing is the opposite. Yes. So every security token that we handle the issue or trade has to have an asset behind it. We're not accepting any anything which is not um, going according to the SEC regulations, uh, which is um, anything which is not asset backed with, with totally against it. All right, so are you are you building on existing platforms? What And if so, what are they and how? Um, the, yeah, at the moment we're looking at uh, several options. In terms of in terms of a hyperledger, the moment um, we're pretty much uh, maximizing what's available and uh, we're looking, you know, we're, we're interested in scalability to, to, to understand whether we can use uh, this platform. You're talking about hyperledger fabric, I take it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there is a uh, scalability performance working group, uh, which, you know, which uh, ha has ideas or people presenting on the scalability of fabric. Um, so the, uh, you know, Lots of ideas on that. Um, anyway, um, fascinating because all of the three people or, you know, even money was talking about digital assets. So everybody is working on this problem. Now we come to, um, to Prasanna Olimbe. Hi there, I'm Prasanna here. Uh, my background has been that I've been working on uh, financial research, equity research, and uh, worked uh, a lot extensive in uh, uh, financial reporting, XBRL, taxonomy for financial reporting, uh, working with the, now we also have a solution for the investor relations of listed companies, issuers to reach out to buy side, sell side, and we built some private uh, protected and encrypted uh, communication channel tools for these companies. Uh, more recently, I have uh, 
worked on a blockchain based identity profile management platform and i want to uh, kind of explore whether this can be used for any kind of um, um you know managing egms or you know private encrypted uh, ballots or back office work which is you know not related to trading per se but has a lot of other um uh, uh which is again the work is very tedious and uh, those kind of things which i thought could be managed well on a blockchain based uh, trusted platform but still maintains privacy so that's my interest in this group and what is your company called virtual research what was that sorry virtual research okay virtual virtual research virtual okay uh, i am not familiar with them uh, maybe they are big because there are so many companies uh, in this space um anyway uh, very interesting also now i think uh, what we have here is the um, couple of things one is you know murali uh, finiwasan who was supposed to be uh, the point person on cash on ledger is not uh, it's not available today so i thought i would just go through the fatf guidelines which just got published uh not not really guidelines really this is a uh minutes of a meeting that i'm going to just go through because this it seems to have some relevance to all of the things that we have talked about right so it's it's saying uh, uh, it's it's not found so i'm going to have to uh i probably put in the wrong um yeah it's 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 um i'm going to see whether i can mess with the link so that i can actually get to it because it's uh it's concatenating two things so it, for people who are not familiar with fatf uh financial action task force uh it is basically a organization that is supposed to be advisory in character uh for an international audience and all of the regulators of all the major countries belong to it and although their recommendations do not appear to have any teeth they are very 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 influential uh they can uh put your country on a proscribed list they can do all kinds of uh you know depending on how much your national regulation follows the fatf guidelines but you know you you are uh put under a risk category which means that when uh, that risk category is taken you are if you don't if you are not in a particular range in that risk category then the people from that country cannot uh trade as easily as people who are not in that list so this is very important because it it uh, constrains the list of investors but the first thing that they talked about for the strategic initiatives is the money laundering risk from stable coins and other uh, emerging assets offer said for example that security tokens okay which are linked to securities now stable coins as we know a link to uh currencies in some way so for a for a scalable trading platform or a post settlement platform we need both we need the assets to be digitized we also need 
the payment to be digitized so that we have a DBP type uh, situation. And everybody's, uh, that is delivery versus payment in an atomic manner. That initiative is um, gathering uh, pace because of things like Libra, uh, even though the governments are not, are not giving a regulatory approval to Libra, they are forced to look at this and to create national stable coins, which will be basically a uh, central bank digital currency. Uh, United States said that it's not going to do it, but I think they're going to, they're being forced into that. There are several other initiatives, but here these stable coins that they are referring to possibly are private ones, like JPM coin, Libra, you know, none of which are publicly available. Uh, so this, in this particular initiative, the, the strategic initiative, all they are just saying is the FATF will closely monitor the developments and continue to engage with the private sector to clarify the FATF's requirement, uh, requirements, right? So, whatever they say will have a great effect on the landscape. Whatever the FATF comes up with. But strangely enough, the second part of this is about digital identity. And as you know, the whenever they talk about AML, CFT uh, rules and so on, digital identity is paramount, right? I mean, without, without a concept of digital identity, there is no concept of uh, beneficial ownership of companies, uh, AML, CFT stuff and all that. So these foundational, uh, foundational infrastructure has to be in place before stable coins become widely used. And normally it, it, it goes by uh, creating a ramp from legacy systems into the systems of the future. And this is also one of our uh, uh, concerns. Uh, anyway, enough of that. I'm going back to the meet, minute, uh, the notes, and I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, projects that we are in, that we are involved in. That means the projects that that we have undertaken. One is the taxonomy. I don't want to talk about it too much because um, that means I would be. Uh, dominating that conversation. Uh, second is money play, may talk about the standards work that uh, that we are doing. Money, do you want to say anything more about it, about that or? Um, yeah, just to follow up on our last week's um, uh, introductory uh, that uh, we introduced to the SDM and how it compares to other standards, uh, six and SDML. Uh, I have uh, added the, 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 the presentation also towards the end. Um, so uh, for those who have not seen or been in the previous meeting, it's just the, a, a more digital data standard that's being developed by is that it covers everything from uh, digital uh, securities assets to uh, the derivatives and life cycle processing. Um, so we, we being part of the SDCDM working group, uh, have been instrumental in, in, in defining the standard uh, and making sure that that will become 
the default data uh, rep, kind of data rep representation and also life cycle representation of um, cyber market uh, adoption in, in blockchain and DLT. Um, so we actually are actually implementing this, this CDM itself is being used within the working group and we provide in the platform uh, for the working group members to actually test the CDM using our DLT implementation and our trading platform. Uh, separately, we are in, in implementing CDM throughout the entire life cycle of digital security, uh, trade life cycle between buy side and sell side, um, which you know that start from uh, digital RFQ to an allocation to settlement and, and also actually custody. We, we are actually introducing uh, multi party computation using custody, and again, all of these contract management is all governed by your CDM. So that's the gist of it. Um, one of the areas of the, uh, of the data standard uh, I mean, we do want to expand on in the ISO 2022 is still, I'm sorry, 2022 is something that we need to explore a little bit further on. I, I might need some help on that. So will there be, I, I noticed that you have those rails to convert from CDM to other existing standards, for example, FPML, uh, ISO 2022, and other existing standards, because you are definitely interested in uh, creating a scale for CDM adoption. And I have highlighted there no industry adoption yet as of third quarter of 2019. Uh, do you have an idea of when uh, your feeling of when these, uh, when that this particular standard would uh, gain wider adoption? Um, the, the standard itself is still a little bit more fluid, but uh, you know, uh, we, we had a much more stable version for the derivatives, but then once we started including securities, um, you know, we had to go back and make sure that um, all aspects of security is also properly governed. Uh, it's being expanded to include collateral. Um, so so that, that this is a much more comprehensive uh, work scheme than in, you know what we originally started out with. And and uh, there's there is still some more work being happened uh, on the final details of the CDM itself. Uh, however, however, there is you know we have gone through two very hacks. Uh, organized by Barclays uh, last year, this year, there's been tremendous in, uh, interest in, in various banks and how this could be adopted. And some of the banks have already started looking into how they could use the CDM internally um, to uh, to at least harmonize their own data between multiple trading platforms. So CDM is not, you know, as a data standard by itself could be used uh, both internally as well as externally. Uh, although the real value comes in when you connect the CDM to a DLT. Uh, the adoption itself, as I said, that we are planning to come up with a product uh, on the digital securities uh, uh, end of this year, early first quarter uh, 2020, uh, that would address this, uh, you know, to be a much more comprehensive. Uh, the most important thing to notice is that is, you know, our advice is that is, if you truly want, um, you know, um, is some sort of a data inter interoperability, CDM is the only standard today available. So uh, anyone who's implementing uh, any kind of DLT solution, we always urge them to you know, uh, look into much more carefully because that's the standard that's going to move around from DLT to DLT uh, and eventually they will become much more commonplace. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, for people who are actually adopting or in the early stages of development, you know, we uh, urge them to consider CDM uh, proactively. Yeah, um, so since I attended both uh, Deriv Hacks, I have a window into the activities surrounding CDM. And this year, um, the, uh, for, for first of all, the ISDA, which is the international uh, swaps and derivatives association is collaborating with Rosetta or Rosetta is actually the technical arm or technical part of this 
which uh, provides Java libraries for doing all kinds of things. That coupled with what Mani said just now about DLTs is what was what is going to make it very powerful. Uh, there were some hyperledger-based uh, DLTs that were uh, in DerivHack last year, but this year I, I didn't see any in New York. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but the space has been uh, taken over mostly by Corda, uh, DA, and then Algorand. So I was planning a presentation on uh, these aspects. Uh, Money had uh, presented on CDM in general and also what advantages it would give you. Uh, mine would be the uh, other side of the coin, which is how do we adopt it? Meaning, uh, of course, you can always buy uh, the product that uh, SwapSub is selling and go to that. But, uh, you know, if you are a big bank, uh, then how does it hook into the systems that you have? Those questions are largely unanswered because in the derivative hack, uh, so I'll go through the, the use cases that they presented. And uh, I noticed that most of the contentious issues like the uh, hook into oracles, which is very important for many, many people here, uh, are, is missing. And, uh, you know, we will uh, we'll, uh, dwell a little more on those topics in the next uh, presentation dealing with this. Now, if, if anybody has questions for uh, money or for me, I would be glad to take, take it. I guess not, uh, because I don't see. So if that is the case, you know, we are not going to go deeper into this, uh, um, into the various other projects right now, because most of the team leaders on these projects are not on this call. Hopefully we will have a better participation in later later calls and please let us know through um, asynchronous channels like the email list, like the wiki pages, how you can participate, what your questions are, what your uh, thoughts are on all these topics. So that's, that's all I have for today. Uh, unless any anybody else has anything more to offer. So I think we are going to close the call a little earlier today. And uh, we will post the minutes of the meeting. And I'm sorry, I didn't get the name of from the city bank. Or, uh... I, I have the name written down here. And she's also on the on the still on the call, so maybe she can. Milena, I thought it was her. Yes, name. I'm here. So you can can you pass some more details about yourself for me? I email ID. We can follow through and see. Sorry, I, I didn't get that. Um, if you could share your contact details, well, that would be great. So. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, it's my email is M I L E N A dot k o h l h o f e r at city dot com k o h k o h l h o f e r kohafer i can reply to the um, email from vipin as well yeah that will be great or, okay or, sure yeah or you can um, uh, put it in the in i the already put it in the wiki Minutes of them. Okay, then then we have it. My contact is there. Yeah, I, I joined the first meeting. 
Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize your. Uh, oh no worries. <laughs> your it's name. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, obviously the financial services guys are uh, eager to to asso to associate with uh, real, uh, you know, people who are in the big banks, um, like you. So yeah, I try to make it whenever I can. Just sometimes the first Wednesday of the month, I have a class with another meeting, but um, I'm always reading the meeting notes um, and will join know. when I can. That's good to know, and especially if you put comments, it would be useful. You know why? Because really speaking, we don't know who this these meeting minutes are reaching. And yeah. Who's actually, who's actually reading this stuff? You even you feel like you're shooting arrows into the void and it's not hitting the target, it's going somewhere. <laughs> you feel like you're blind, you know. You know what I mean. I hear you. <laughs> so is it useful at all to you? And especially I urge you to attend the next uh, uh, meeting with uh, on the twentieth. Yeah, so that is the, which meeting is that? I don't think it's on the calendar yet, is it? It's in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's always on the calendar as it should I be. I thought this, so this is, what, every two weeks, this meeting? I thought it was every month. Hold on. Yeah, every oh, no, it's every two weeks. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. Wednesday yeah, so, at 10 so. I will be on the call. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, and also, um, we need to ask, uh, Let's say we need to ask uh, Marley some tough questions because yes. because uh, Microsoft is is active in this field, but I don't know how effective the token taxonomy initiative is because it highly focused on Ethereum uh, because of its uh, antecedents, um, and I don't know whether the Solutions that they are proposing, or even you know, they're just proposing a taxonomy. So, right. further to that, we want you know, if you look at the future uh, meetings here, one thing that we want to do is we want to do an ontological approach, which means uh, taxonomy is a hierarchical relationship. That means if something is in something else, then you draw a line from that, you know, if you say bonds, and then you have corporate bonds, so there's a one unidimensional, uh, you know, there is an edge from the bond to the, uh, to the corporate bond. But uh, real life is a little more complex than that, so that's why we are, uh, we are, uh, exploring the ontological approach, which means that it is not just a line that goes from one to another based on an is a relationship, but also based on other relationships. So you can uh, basically, uh, the if you draw a line that goes from corporate bonds to uh, you know some other kind of bond, then we can label that uh, line. Well, in a, in graph theory, that would be a, that would be an edge. So we will uh, label the edge. And there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity happening in this field because uh, this will bring us closer to a depiction of the real world uh, in a programmatic terms. Um, which, you know, obviously there's a, a, a big gap between, uh, between the real world and the representation of that world in a digital form. Uh, so there, there's quite a bit of work going on in this area, and I would like to see whether we would, you know, whether that would apply to our field. So the token Yeah, I agree. Um, and I don't know if you're aware, but on Monday they released um, the document with the specifications and the website, and there's a lot of information online. So I suggest that um, everyone read that before Marley presents, so that 
we can have good questions, like you said. Uh, you are talking about the um, working group of the W3C working group, which released this document, or which what are you referring to? Um, it was released by the EEA on oh, Monday. Oh. Okay, yeah, uh, we had the draft and we have. Uh, so they released the framework version 1.0 and the specs, and then you can see um, what example specs are out there already. Uh -huh. um, and then there's also like a token designer that they've talked about. So a lot of information on the website um, that they released on Monday. So I think yeah. it would just be good for everyone to read that before the meeting in two weeks. So this was a, uh, a classification hierarchy example, which we took uh, from the taxonomy uh, paper uh, from uh, to TTI, Token Taxonomy Institute. Uh, so right. that was during the draft phase. Now okay. you're saying that there is a, a more comprehensive and a, and a standard release. Uh, yeah. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up in a separate uh, page with, or, or in the same page with the link to the document. Uh, and I will try to search for it on the- I'll send you the email they sent so you can have it. Oh, beautiful. I think yeah. I might also get it, but I don't, I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well. Beyond that, I mean, you know, maybe in one of the future meetings, I can talk more about uh, uh, multi-party complication. This is a more, you know, uh, newer topic that's emerging in financial capital markets, and how we are applying it to custody, digital custody, a much more safer way of having custody than what's available. You know. So that would be like a some kind of a NFM signatures or a, some other form of NPC, right? Yeah, so it's a specialized implementation of MPC. Um, so we are actually, you know, all want to solve that uh, custody problem for the institutional market. Is, is today's market practice is not sufficient for, and then we actually went and discussed with, with the uh, with both regulators, SEC and FTFTC, um last month, and you know that's something that that we are working with them as well. Well, beautiful. I'm sure Offer would be interested in that too. Or probably he has his own MPC solution. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we're actually a partner of Microsoft, and um, um, you know the, this entire market is um, the several standards. Um, you know, but the, the main issue that Ethereum at the moment is, um, uh, you know, it's uh, very trustworthy because it's public, but um, they're not capable of reaching the the throughput that's uh, needed. That's a major obstacle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are uh, familiar with some of those, uh, including the L2 stacks that are out there, level two, which uh, obviously take the surety into an off-chain uh, off sort of computational model. Uh, but uh, I think Mari is talking about it uh, as applies to Corda, because he's, that is the main platform he's working on. Well, this is not, I mean, the, the MPC is nothing to do with Corda. It's a completely independent, uh, new new emerging uh, standards or, or, or process, I would say. Uh, uh, one of the interesting applications of MPC is custody. So there are a lot more. Google has actually open sourced their first MPC solution about a, about a month back or so. Uh, Corda is independently working on, I assume that's on top of what Google has already open sourced it. Um, but that there are a lot of interesting applications, you know, um, much, much more powerful than zero knowledge proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, MPC has been around for a long time. Uh, whether a, it gets integrated into the capital markets infrastructure for custody or something else, that is, a, that is the real, um, you know, question, right? I mean, um, you know, various forms of MPC. Like you said, uh, so if there's a Google um, uh, open source thing, 
could we have access to that as well? Or yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah I'll, I'll send out that link. Okay, because you know, obviously, what a meeting once every two weeks is not, you know, we're not going to learn much uh, unless we have asynchronous communication during the week, uh, during the intervening period, to talk about these interesting topics because the news is coming fast and furious and not anybody can uh, follow everything that is around. Anyway, I think we have managed to take up all the time to 11 o'clock or so. And uh, so we have to bring this meeting to a close. Thanks for everyone who held in there. Uh, uh, and I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I must, uh, um, I'm gonna, I haven't, we haven't put our name in the list on the group. So uh, we'll add it and we'd be happy to anyone who has uh, uh, some sort of a solution or, uh, or add on or something with, or a partnership and so on. We're, uh, we're uh, very active um, to, to, to have a full uh, ecosystem. So uh, we'd be happy to cooperate with anyone. Beautiful. Um, Put up your name on the list with some contacts if you, whatever you want to share, you know, nobody's uh, forcing you to. So that's that on, on the minutes of the meeting. Are you on the mailing list? Uh, I think I am. Yeah, you are because I know that uh, your name came up on the mailing list. Thank you. Great. And uh, until November 20th, then.